All indications out of Washington right now suggest a military strike against Syria could be imminent. President Trump tweeted as much this morning, warning Syria's ally Russia to get ready because missiles, quote, will be coming, nice and new and smart. Speaking of smart, five years ago, in response to the last administration's plans to bomb Syria, Trump tweeted this, quote, be prepared. There is a small chance that our horrendous leadership could unknowingly lead us into World War III. Well, that was a wise response, the kind that could get you elected president of the United States. And yet, here we are, once again on the brink of something whose outlines and consequences are unknowable and terrifying. On Monday night, we spent more than 15 minutes talking about that. We asked what seemed like the most basic questions about a war in Syria, questions the geniuses on the other channels ought to be asking but are not. We're told we must attack Syria in order to punish President Assad for launching a chemical attack against his own people last weekend. It's our moral duty, endless CNN panels have reminded us, to uphold international standards of behavior and punish war criminals like Assad. Okay. But are we sure Assad was responsible for the gas attacks? Many people claim he was. They started claiming that within hours of the attacks themselves, before many of the most basic facts were even known, and they're still claiming it. But where's the proof? They have provided no proof. They've just made loud noises and denounced the question askers. How would it help make us richer, or safer, or happier? You'd think our policymakers would keep that question foremost in mind always. They don't. They can well, it's easy to understand why other countries might want us to attack Syria. China, for example, they'd be thrilled by it. If you sought to displace America as the leader of the world, you'd want it to weaken its military and go broke. And nothing achieves that faster than a pointless war, as we've proved in the recent past. So instead tonight, we're joined by Noah Rothman. He's an associate editor at Commentary Magazine. He called us Russian propagandists and ostensibly patriotic, too. But at least he was brave enough to come and explain himself. Noah Rothman joins us tonight. Noah, thanks for coming on. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. So we have um, legitimate kind of news on this story. This comes from Reuters. Uh, the defense secretary was just asked specifically the question essentially that we asked on Monday, the one that you called as traitors for asking, which is, do we know that Assad was behind the gas attack? And this is what the secretary of defense just said, quote, we're still assessing the intelligence, ourselves and our allies. <laughs> we're still working on this. So as with the gas attack last year, last April, the Secretary of Defense, who would know, has not confirmed that we know the Assad government did it. So why am I unpatriotic for asking the same question? Well, let me say at the outset, I have not called you a traitor. I did not call you unpatriotic. I would yes, not you did. question. I have no, it sorry, right here. You, you called me, and I'm quoting, an ostensibly um, patriotic American opinion maker who is advancing the geopolitical narratives in defense of a blood-soaked regime that threatens American interests. I'm not mm -hmm. attacking you. You are attacking me for asking the most basic of all questions, and it turns out that the Secretary of Defense well, I believe your question deserves questions. to be answered. But uh, okay. whether you know it or not, you are advancing pro-Assad narratives. And you should check out Iran TV, Press TV, and the Kremlin-funded network RT to see the favorable coverage you are receiving. Uh, I don't believe you're but doing that irrelevant. intentionally. that's irrelevant. No, no, but hold on. That's irrelevant to the head of the U.K. Independence Party. He helped lead the Brexit campaign. He's been a long time, a pretty vehement supporter of President Trump, one of the very few on the on. on. Thank As a you. Trump supporter, what do you what do you make of the move toward engagement war with Syria? Well, just think about what's happened over the course of the last 15 years or so. Um, Iraq, we went in, uh, we tried to get rid of the Arab nationalist dictator, we succeeded. What was the result? Hundreds of thousands of death and chaos. Libya, the same. We go in, we get rid of an Arab nationalist leader that we don't like, and we open the door for ISIS and, of course, the crisis we've seen coming over the Mediterranean to Europe. So our track right. record, our track record of intervening because morally, we think we should, without a proper strategy, without working out a long-term plan, is bad. And let's just look at this. A week ago, the president said American troops would pull out of Syria. Tonight, we appear to be on the verge of perhaps quite large-scale military action, and not just with America, France and Britain joining to. Do we have a plan? Can you imagine if the scale of the strikes was such that Assad got toppled. Do we actually think that would make Syria safer and better? You know, whatever we think, whatever we think of Assad and the support that he's had from the Russians, they have just beaten ISIS militarily in the field. So there are some big issues here where we have similar interests. 